yo yo welcome back so um this is my first video like facetime style video on this channel because this week i put up three videos on using selenium webdriver js and um, i just put them up there with very little explanation as to the my my reasoning behind it so i'm gonna make a video to explain a little bit my thought process with that and basically this all ties into the purpose of this channel. So this channel is gonna be about web development. It's gonna be about conquering JavaScript via web development, running the full gamut of web development from designing to prototyping to uh, building web, like websites and eventually web apps uh, using JavaScript technologies. So um, that's that. But initially to start off, I wanna start with some more basic skills and um, the reason being is that a lot of times you'll find that people that start to learn HTML and CSS and JavaScript, you know, they, they get past the stage where they know now how to make very basic websites or they'll know how to use JavaScript in a very basic way, but they want to level up and they're not sure what to do or how to do that in order to finally get a job, right? And then there's also the issue of people who are learning these things, but they're learning it while hungry. Like they want to eat, they they want to start working ASAP. And uh, but they they might feel like they don't have the skills yet. You know, they they can't build a an app yet, so therefore they're not ready. Or they can't design a full a full fledged website, therefore they're not ready. And there's some truth to that, but you can still get your foot in the door at a very very early stage in your in your development as a developer because I'll give you two, two ways, two, two obvious ways one can do that. The first one is for people that just know the basics of HTML and CSS, have maybe gone through Codecademy, some free code camp, and uh, they've made some basic websites, right? But they're not ready yet to make you know a landing page for the latest Adobe product or something like that requires serious design chops, some really solid knowledge of, of uh, responsive websites and uh, and website optimization, speed optimization, things like that. And you work in collaboration with other people. But there's something you could do for a company in the meantime, and that's building HTML, CSS emails. Email development is a very, very um, uh, beginner-friendly way to start out in the, in the tech industry as a developer. The barrier to entry is much lower, and basically all you're doing is building static websites, but that's supposed to be rendered in, in an email client. And um, it's a little different because in emails you build often using tables, but if you're just learning HTML and CSS, you should you know practice your tables. Um, you write a lot of inline styles. In a way, you learn a lot of things that are not recommended to build websites, but you're going to be working. and it's it's uh it's still something that that's um, that's in demand out in the wild and you could just start going out there and applying for jobs as an email developer now it doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to get one but start practicing building some emails um, um, get yourself out there in this channel I want to eventually start doing that I want to start building emails and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to you know maybe build like several emails of increasing complexity uh, and using modern tools that are used to build emails and um, and to test emails and things like that. So that's one thing. The other thing is um, there's another way to get in, the, get your foot in the door in tech, and that's via testing. Now, testing is just like you can get hired as a manual tester with zero uh, coding skills. You could you can um, you can probably build. I mean. It's, it's like a video game tester, like, you know, you don't need to know how to build video games, but the, if you're hired as a video game tester, you're just going to play video games for a while and, like, find bugs and things like that. With, with testing, it's similar. It's, it helps to have knowledge of, of the basic technologies because it helps in order to understand what's causing bugs, uh, when to expect a bug, or where to look for bugs and things like that, and kind of uh, see where the bugs are coming from. But... Um, you, you just need a very basic level of coding knowledge. And the thing with testing is, if you know some JavaScript, like Codecademy level JavaScript, 
I'll give you my story. So my story is I work right now, I, I work full time for two different companies. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm hired as a contractor by these companies, right? I'm still a beginner, yet I'm making a decent amount of money uh, working with these two companies. And all I do is write test automation scripts. And that's why I put up these videos using Selenium WebDriver because test automation involves using a tool such as Selenium WebDriver um, because this uh, Selenium al allows you to control a browser. You write scripts in your language of choice. You run it on top of Node.js or, or whatever, and it automates a browser. And you tell the browser how to interact with the web page in order to test it and, it, and it does it super fast. And that's a really um, that's a really business critical aspect in the, of development, which is the functional test, the acceptance tests, and these are the tests that just verify that that the user interface works and that it meets certain requirements that you know the user can can log in, um, select a product, add to cart, and check out. That's really important because if a user can't do that, your whole website's broken, right? Now you can test this manually, but um, in order to speed up your workflow uh, for you as a as an individual QA tester or for for a team of QA testers, is um, to build a test automation suite that automates a ton of stuff that does not need to be constantly manually tested, only uh, if the tests fail. So you run those tests, and then you do some extra manual testing on the side, right? Um, that's kind of what I've been doing. Uh, I, I started as a manual tester for a startup, just doing it like a few few hours a week, like four, four or five hours a week. But then um, it grew into, into writing scripts. Basically, the director of engineering heard that I had a new JavaScript. He was like, look into Selenium automation. And they hung up. I had no idea what that was. I was like, do I got to wear a lab coat or something? What, what, what the hell is Selenium? Looked it up, got up and running with it. And... Um, I, I use the JavaScript version of Selenium because you can use Java, which is the mo by far the most common uh, language used with Selenium, or you can use Python, Ruby, and C Sharp. So, but I, I'm using JavaScript, and um, there's not a lot of resources out there to get up and running with the JavaScript bindings for Selenium, but that's why I'm making these videos in order to get you started as a beginner, as a JavaScript beginner. Um, if you just know how to script things, you don't know yet how JavaScript ties with HTML, CSS, and all these things to build websites or apps, and you just know straight JavaScript, JavaScript scripting, you can already get started on a skill that's in demand by real companies. And that's why I made this, uh, this series of videos, and it's an ongoing series. It's going to be two to three videos a week, and um, hopefully you'll, you'll get the hang of it. It'll help you to get started. And and that's pretty much it. I mean, that's all. That's all I gotta say about that. Um, so stay tuned next week. Three more videos. Hopefully it'll be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And and then leave me comments, subscribe, and let me know. Give me your feedback on what you think about the tutorials. If it's clear enough. If it's not, I'm kind of new at all this, so. I'm just recording this right off my laptop, so uh, any criticism is welcome. That's it. Peace.